Well, the FAA's remote ID proposal, ground RC airplanes, what you need to know, coming up. Hi, I'm JR, the Traveling Tech Guy. Welcome to another episode. This video is going to be a little different than my normal videos, as we'll be discussing the proposed rules changed by the FAA concerning remote ID. So if this is your first time here and you want to learn about RC model airplanes and other technology related stuff, please consider subscribing. Click that bell notification so you'll get notified each time a new video is uploaded. The FAA released its 319 page proposed rules on remote identification or remote ID back on December 26. Basically, these rules would require all unmanned aircraft in the United States to be registered with a unique identification number and equipped with a device that broadcasts that number and the location of that aircraft in real time. These proposed rules are in response to safety concerns over the increase of incidents where drones are being flown either recklessly or maliciously near other aircraft or overcrowded areas such as a football stadium. Not to mention the proposed rules also are in preparation for the coming flood of the commercial use of drones that will be sharing our nation's already crowded airspace. While primarily aimed at the commercial use of drones, the FAA does not see a difference between a drone or a traditional aircraft. To the FAA, they are all unmanned aircraft systems or UAS. The proposed rules to remote identification network consist of three independent parts. First, the proposal itself. It establishes operating requirements for the drone operators as well as production standards for drone manufacturers. Second, the creation of a network of remote ID service providers for collecting ID and location in real time while the drone is in flight. And third, the collection of technical requirements that will guide manufacturing of drones and other unmanned aircraft going forward. Now there are two categories of the remote ID. One is standard, the other was limited. Standard remote ID requires a signal to broadcast identification and location such as longitude, latitude, altitude of the drone directly from the drone, as well as through the internet at the same time. The other is limited remote ID. Would only be required to transmit information to the remote ID service provider through the internet only if the drone isn't capable of being operated no more than 400 feet away from the operator. So if you have an older drone or one that can't be retrofitted for a remote ID, you'll only be able to fly in designated geographical areas such as an FAA recognized flying field or you could take your chances and fly anyway, but if you get caught, you could face some very stiff penalties. And something else to think about. Under the proposed rules, if you have a drone that has a standard remote ID capabilities and it cannot connect to a remote ID service through either direct broadcast or through the internet, your drone won't take off. And if you happen to lose connection while in flight, with either one standard or limited remote ID, you will have to land as soon as practical in order to comply with the law. Now there's only three exceptions, amateur built drones, government owned drones, and drones weighing under 0.55 pounds. So how will this affect hobbyists that fly planes? Fortunately for all us hobbyists, the FAA is given great flexibility to community based organizations such as the Academy of Model Aeronautics or the AMA. The AMA has been working closely with the FAA to ensure that its members aren't required to equip their aircraft with the remote ID technology as long as the member is flying at an approved chartered field. The only big change, we only had to register ourselves regardless of the number of aircraft that we have. It's unclear at this time on whether a member can use an app-based solution to satisfy the remote ID requirements if they're not flying in an approved site. We'll have to wait and see on that one. If you're not an AMA member and you don't fly at a designated field, well, you do have to comply with all of the rules. As long as the FAA continues working with the AMA, we should be fine. One question I have, will the planes that we buy in the future come equipped with the remote ID technology if the proposed rules become law? As the rules are currently written, the wording only mentions commercial drones. But at this point, we don't know and we're just gonna to have to wait and see what transpires. For now, we all have a chance to have our voices heard. Starting today, January 1st, you'll have until March 2nd to submit your comments to the FAA on how the proposed rules would greatly impact our hobby. Now, please remember to submit 
comments with legitimate concerns and not just rants against the FAA. That'll go a long way in helping us achieve our goals. I'll post a link to submit your comments to the FAA, as well as a link to the latest information from AMA in the description below. So what are your thoughts on the proposed rules? Let me know down in the comments section below, and I'll catch you next time.